Hey guys, Callum here, and in this video we're going to be finally reviewing the Wido X40 IDEX 3D printer. Let's go. Okay, so before we dive into this review, I just want to tell you a little bit about my review style. Generally, any company that sells a 3D printer is going to tell you all of the positives. So you've probably already been stuffed full of the positives when you look at a 3D printer's page, and that's great, that, that's what a company is gonna do. No company's gonna be like, sure, uh, buy our printer, it does X, Y, and Z wrong. So, you know, as a, as a 3D printer reviewer, I like to obviously give credit where credit's due and tell you, tell you the best bits about the machine, but I also like to really dive into what the printer doesn't do quite so well as I feel like if you know what it doesn't do so well and you're happy to manage that then you know that when you buy a printer you're going to be happy with it and that's how I like to give my reviews. So now you understand that I'm going to dive in first to the pros of this printer and what I found it did particularly well and what I quite liked about the printer. So the first thing that I noticed that I quite liked on this printer above the standard design for instance is the way they have set up their hot end so on the printer you'll see that it runs along these nice linear rails for the x axis and that provides quite a nice smooth setup but specifically the bit i really like is the efficiency in the x direction so you've got your hot end with its heat sink built in around it and a cooling fan to the front so you've then got a space which allows for the airflow to escape and then you've got the front fan which acts as the the part cooling fan so that's all quite nice obviously on this side it's a little bit less x efficient because we are incorporating the z sensor as a magnetic probe sensor so that adds another couple of centimeters to the x-axis but efficiency is important in an idx printer because obviously it maximizes the space where you can get both of these printers going before they hit in the middle. So the less space these can take up in the x-axis, the less of a loss of part size you've got in between them. In other words, when they're put together, that's the amount of bed you lose when you're printing in IDEX mode, and that's about five centimeters. So not too bad. Could be better, but I, I think that's, that's a pretty good implementation. I've seen much worse. Another thing this printer has, which it says is a good thing and could be a good thing, is the auto off functionality so if you leave it on it will go off principally the idea of saving energy if you accidentally leave your printer on or standby mode once the print finishes it, it turns itself off that's a good thing of course the third thing i've got on my pros list is the magnetic z probe and i've got that on the list not just because it works quite reliably but more importantly it's very easy to move it up and down if you wish to adjust the, the point at which it triggers. So obviously if you move it so that the base of the probe is closer to the tip of the nozzle, then it will trigger earlier and so your printer will move less far down. That just gives you a little bit more flexibility with different thicknesses of beds. And again, I'll talk about why that's good in a minute. So you've got these two grub screws in the side of the magnetic probe here and they, when released, allow you to move it up and down and tighten it again. Really easy to do. I like that implementation. Another thing I noticed about this printer which works really well is the, the repeatability of the X-axis homing. It's got a slightly different end stop sensor than I've seen on other printers. Normally they have a sort of lever catch, which isn't bad, but it's not perfect when it comes to repeatably triggering. This one's got a sort of button and it seems to provide really good results. How do I know it provides good results? Well, I've had to do quite a few print resumes and I've had to stop the print, work out the layer that it failed at, and then resume the print by chopping the G-code at that layer and starting it again. And obviously that's dependent on my ability to find the right layer, but when the printer resumed, you couldn't tell where it had resumed from because the accuracy of the X end stop was so good which is something I can't say about many printers. So overall, I would say we've got here a pretty sturdy IDEX setup, which is a great base for further upgrades. I think the cabling is fine. It's not causing any problems. We've got nice smooth movement on the X and Y axis, and the printer feels pretty sturdy when it's printing. I don't feel like it's gonna shake itself off a table or anything like that. 
So that's really good. That's the end of my pros list. So now we're going to go on to the cons. And there are quite a lot of cons that I came up with for this printer. The first thing on the cons list and what has probably been the biggest bugbear for me is the implementation and parts they have used for their drive gears. The drive gears are singular in that they only grip the filament from one side and the other side is just a, a bearing that rolls along the filament and that just limits the amount of grip and push force you can get on the filament itself so they don't give as much force as, as some drive gears on the market. The second thing that annoyed me about them is the tension is fixed. You've got no ability to adjust your tension. So if you're printing different materials, you can't play with it very much at all. Another really annoying thing about the setup in general is these filament sensors. They've got a plastic cap on and they're just using pressure fit to hold the cap in place. But the trouble is they flick off really easily and then that means that the filament comes away and stops triggering the filament runout sensor altogether. All in all it's just a pain for no benefit. If you're going to do a filament runout sensor make sure that the cap stays on with screws or something like that. I ended up using just some tape and wrapping around the, the parts just to hold them in place. The other annoying thing about the components chosen for this drive gear setup is the fact they are entirely plastic. What that means is if you're planning to use this printer for a workhorse, they're going to get worn down. First of all, the filament runout sensor will wear down. Then you've also got the arm of the drive gear, which runs down, or is plastic and could run down. And again, you've got the entrance to where the filament is, is coupled to the Bowden tube is being plastic and that will wear down. As these things wear down, you get more play in the filament, more likely to get breaks, more likely to get jams and more likely for it to just not work. So using anything where you, you've got constant friction and you've got plastic against plastic, it's going to wear down and it should always be reinforced with a metal element. So that's not good. The other thing that's a pain with this, I know I'm going on a bit, but loading filament is, is also not always easy. The alignment isn't perfect and so it can get stuck um, when trying to load in, but also that cap of the filament sensor can pop off and then you've got to take it back out, pull it, put it back, the cap on, and push it through. Anyway, it's a nightmare. You could argue though that that is the best component to be a bit of a nightmare because you can upgrade it, but you shouldn't have to upgrade something out of the box just to get a, a nice usable experience. They can be made to work, so it's not the end of the world, but if you are planning to do a lot of printing on this printer and to get the most value out of it, that's what you're going to be doing, then you probably are going to want to upgrade that part. And obviously being an IDEX printer, it means you're going to need to do the upgrade twice. Okay, so the next thing on my cons list, and it's not a big con this one, it's just a bit annoying. The UI and, and general sort of uh, operation of the machine could be a bit better. There's things like when a print finishes or you manually end a print, it will restart. The fact that it becomes unoperational for 30 seconds is a bit annoying because it starts to cool down. You've then got to reheat it. And that leads me on to another point that's a bit of a pain. You can heat this printer up, but you can't heat the printer up while you're on other menus. So the minute you leave the printing heating screen, it starts to cool back down again. So say you wanted to heat the printer up and then perform some bed leveling, which you should do with the, the bed hot. You can't really do that via the, via the touch screen because the bed's cooling down the minute you leave the heating which is just a really silly design, really silly implementation. Anyway, that's that one. Um, it's also got a few other annoying things like the, the movement in my eyes is backwards. So if you, if you push it to the right, it goes down. If you push it to the left, it goes up. And that probably is just because the way we do things in Europe and America is a different way to how it works in Asia. They read the opposite direction, for instance. So if you're used to reading mangas, then maybe that will make more sense to you. Another thing that's a bit annoying is you can't control the X and Y movements by putting a command in or the temperatures by putting a command in. You have to do it all with button presses and that's a lot slower than just being able to say, right, tap, two, two, oh, that's what I want it set to temperature, tap, six, zero, set, that's what I want the bed set to. You've got to manually push, 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 push all the way through. Another thing that annoyed me, small thing, but it's just general usability that people don't always think about, 
When you're using this with an SD card, it's got a massive gaping hole and it's very easy, especially if this SD card is on the other side of your printer, to sort of reach over, go to put your SD card in and all of a sudden it's dropped down into the printer. You've then got to push it up, take the screws off, tip it out to get the SD card back out, which is a faff and has happened to me about three times in the short space of time I've had this printer. The Wi-Fi setup, I wasn't able to get to work. It's connected, but it doesn't show up. So I might look at this more in other videos and, and see if I can play around with the router to get it to work. Um, we won't judge that one too much. It's not something I personally would have used much anyway, but I know some of you guys out there might have liked to see that and might have liked to see how the camera works. I've looked at a few other YouTube videos to see what they thought on the camera setup and generally people thought it was pretty good but the position wasn't the best for seeing everything and well yeah it, it could be could be slightly better so but you know if, if you can get it to work then then great it might be a good bit of valid value for you if that was the bit of the review you're really hoping to see then let me know in the comments down below and i will look into it more and hopefully get it working another thing i didn't like about this printer in general is the the bed surface the trouble is with these sort of grippy textured beds is they're stuck straight onto a steel bill plate. The steel flexes a lot as it's heated up and so you get quite a lot of warpage over the bed that can't really be dealt with. Yes, this printer has a Z-probe, the magnetic Z-probe, in that it can probe at different points on the bed to work out the, the position and the warp and try and account for that in the movements. But I found that the Z's the Z axis is a bit cronky, especially while it's down on the bed. And having it move up and down, up and down, up and down just didn't really work very well. So I turned off the G29 command and just went with a single G28, which is a standard homing command. It'll home X, home Y, and home Z at one point in the middle. And that's it. It will then just go ahead and print and uh, you can do the best to manually level the bed and work with it like that. I've got separate videos for manual bed leveling and for getting good first layer adhesion. So you can watch those if that's the sort of angle that you would like to pursue. I also, because I find these bed build surfaces a bit annoying, they eventually get built up with this sort of filament embedded into it. And then that comes off in parts and shows up in parts. I prefer to use glass, but obviously because it's using a magnetic touch probe, you're a bit limited with how thick a glass you can use. So if you are gonna do that, what I recommend is turn that bed over. So you've got the steel side facing upwards and then put a really thin sheet of glass on top. Ikea sells these little four packs of glass, which a lot of 3D printers use for the sort of 300 by 300 millimeter bed size. This is actually 310 by 310, so it's slightly too short, but it works well and it's small enough, thin enough that the magnetic Z probe will still sense the steel through that mirror glass and that works quite well. The other thing I wanted to mention, I also found that the power resume didn't work either. So we've had some quite bad storms here in the UK recently and a lot of power cuts. And three or four times now this has gone off and that's it. No option to resume the print when it switches back on, which is annoying. But it's how I found out that the X repeatability of that touch probe is quite good. So if you're buying this for the filament runout sensor or you're buying it for the power resume, don't bother because in my experience on the two printers I've got, it doesn't work. And they are running the latest firmware that's available from the Wido website, which doesn't look like it's been updated anytime recently. The last thing I wanted to say on the negatives and I think is an important one to be aware of, it's a bit of a faff getting this printer to work with other slices and you have to add in some standard g-code at the top of every file that you slice and that is especially the case if you want this to work in idex mode which you presumably do otherwise why would you buy an idex printer so what i did to get it to work was i used one of the files that came with the printer it had a long pre-processing command which basically just gives uh which which basically is, is just a picture uh, puts that on the screen and then it's got a few other bits of information about the sort of x y z maximum dimensions which doesn't really matter um but it needs it wants to see that just so it knows that it's compatible with the idex mode basically what it's saying is it needs to have an x of less than 150 a max x and a minimum 
x of zero and a maximum x of 150 just so it knows that this isn't going to try and smash into the other one uh, so it puts that there just as a safeguard but obviously you'll be careful with your slicing anyway if you're using an idx printer if you've bought one of these machines and you want help with that a little bit then put a comment down below and i can always add in that custom bit of g-code into the description for you so you can see exactly how that works so all in all what do i think of this printer it is okay you know i i'm sold on idex printers i really want to find one that i can just use and it works brilliantly but also doesn't cost you an arm and a leg at the end of the day you can now get good printers for two three hundred pounds and there's not twice as much equipment in an idex printer so i don't want to be paying more than twice the price for a reliable idex printer and yet at the moment it does seem that if you want a good reliable idex printer you you've got to pay thousands and to me that's a bit annoying so i probably would rather opt for a printer like this and change out the bits that i'm not happy with and maybe you're the same or maybe you are happy to spend a few thousand on a very reliable idex printer so basically if you're looking for a printer that you can get out of the box and it's going to work perfectly for you with no tinkering this is not the printer for you if you really want an idex printer you don't want to pay more than a thousand pounds and you're happy to do a few upgrades to get it printing well this could be quite a good base and i think that credit where credit's due there's a lot that has been done right with the printer even little simple things like these brushes that brush off the filament off the nozzle is nice little touches that they have done well they have thought about it in a lot of areas not in all of them but it's not bad so if you are an experienced 3d printer then i think this printer could be okay for you so anyway that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you're notified of more content in the future next weekend we've got the review of the ender 3 s1 which i know a lot of people are looking forward to hearing my take on that so don't forget to stay tuned for that one this year i've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up with my own business 3d tomorrow we're launching a lot of new filaments you can see behind me the range is already getting quite nice but also we've got recycled ones coming up and that is going to allow me to expand into some more interesting materials and some more interesting combinations towards the end of the year i'm hoping to be in a new space with 3d tomorrow and that will allow me to produce more content directly from my factory and i hope that's something that people will really enjoy really engage with and want to see more of as far as i'm aware there aren't really any big youtubers that actually make their own filament so i think that's a space i can fill and i hope that uh, a lot of you will come along with me for that journey i'm really happy to have just hit 1500 subscribers which is quite nice uh, but also i really want 3d tomorrow to be synonymous with sustainability and being the greenest filament manufacturer on the planet i'm only small but i'm sure that i can push some of the big boys into doing things a little bit better being more accountable and not just plastering the market with greenwash and uh, pretending they're doing things they're not but that's a topic for a video another day and if you'd like to hear my thoughts on that sort of thing then as always drop a message in the comments down below thanks again for watching thank you if you're already subscribed and i'll see you next time cheers